You are what I'm looking for. I've got a really fun Chop It Up inspired project for you today, sharing a project using 12 by 12 paper to create a card and envelope. Today I'll be using the Magic Forest die cuts, ephemera, and background papers from Stamperia. This is a gorgeous collection and I'll quickly flip through. The first 12 by 12 paper I have is called Backgrounds and there are some super beautiful majestical distressed looking images with ornate gold detail and rusty old metal and it's really really cool. The second book I have is The Magic Forest and this has some cut aparts, some tags, some gorgeous backgrounds, absolutely beautiful beautiful brickwork and just gorgeous elements and a full sheet of cut apart sentiments. So this is a really fun collection and for today's video I'll be using the backgrounds and I've selected this gorgeous distressed wood background with ornate metal details on it. So I'm going to create a card and envelope. To do this I'm going to use my Gemvelope template reference book. This is a book that I've designed. It will be linked in the description box down below where you have all of these templates and measurements to create many different sizes of cards and envelopes. So for today, I'm going to be creating an A7 envelope. And to do this, I need a piece of paper that measures eight and a half inches by 11. So we're gonna have to cut this down. So I'm grabbing my Tonic Studios rotary trimmer, love this trimmer, and I'm just gonna turn it around because I want the left side of this paper to be the part that I use the most of on my envelope. So I'm going to cut that down to eight and a half inches and then I'm going to rotate and I'm going to cut this down to 11. Now I thought I was going to take half an inch off of the bottom and the top, but I decided against it and ended up cutting two half inch strips off the bottom to make this 11 inches. Now these little strips don't go to waste, save those and we're going to incorporate that into our card later on. So also this large piece that's left over, we're going to use that on the front of our card. So all the cutting is done here. I'm gonna grab my scoreboard and I'm gonna pop it in across the eight and a half inch side and I'm gonna decide which side I want the front of my envelope to be. So when I score, the paper is gonna fold in and this is the side that we're going to see. So I wanna make sure that I'm scoring on the top here. So I'm gonna start by scoring across the eight and a half inch side at half an inch and then move over to eight inches, super simple. I'm gonna rotate my paper one turn to the left. The left means that that is going to be the top little flap that closes my envelope. So this is how I want my paper to be laid out. So I'll score at two and a quarter, and then seven and a half, okay? So I'll set up my scoreboard aside. I'm gonna pull my book back in and take a look at the next step here. These green outline areas, are the score marks that are identified and we need to cut those away. So I'm gonna grab some scissors and I'm gonna go ahead and cut those four little corners away. Now don't worry if you don't get the straightest of cuts, so we can come back in and fix this. Now I'm speeding through this part, but I really do take my time to make sure that I get nice straight cuts and that I don't overcut and end up damaging sort of the sides of the envelope. Once that's done, I'm gonna pull my book back in and take a look at the next steps. We need to cut off those four little corners, creating angle cuts, crease all of the folds, and then apply adhesive to close the envelope. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna grab some sharp precision scissors here and I'm gonna make 45 degree angle cuts just on that little scored little flap there. So it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just so that everything will close together nicely, okay? Next, we're going to crease all of those scores. I'm gonna grab my bone folder and really burnish in those creases so I get good sharp folds on my cardstock. And then the last piece, we're gonna fold that down and then crease the fold. Okay, and now if you notice that the paper is not perfectly straight, you can see those little edges kind of poking out there. This is where we can come back in and trim anything that's not perfectly straight because you'll be able to see that kind of hanging over. So I'll grab my scissors and come back in and just trim that away. And then that will line up perfectly. 
Okay, and I'm going to do that to both sides because I didn't cut very straight. It was a little hard to see with this busy pattern. It was hard to see those score lines. All right, so that's done. Now we're going to open this back up and you'll notice that you have a small flap and a large flap. The larger flap is where we're going to apply adhesive right along those edges. Okay, and then that's how we're going to close the envelope. So I'll apply adhesive and I'll fold that up, grab my bone folder and burnish in that adhesive. You could use liquid glue, tape runner, whatever you've got here. Okay, our envelope is formed. Now you can make the envelope flap decorative. You can round the corners, you can trim it, you can leave it. I decide to just cut a little angled cut into those little flaps, just to give it a little bit of interest. And I like the way that looks. I really want this envelope to almost feel like a little treasure box. All right, there we go, our envelope is complete. Now for the next step, this is optional. You can apply adhesive to the flap to close it when you're ready to send it away. But I want to apply a little die cut to tuck my envelope flap inside of. I like that sort of fun look and I feel like these die cuts are gonna have the perfect sort of look for my project. So I'm pulling out the ephemera here and just digging through and in two seconds I found the perfect piece that I wanted. There was this sort of shiny, foily, ornate heart with a little key lock in it. And I thought that was perfect. If I just kind of glue that halfway and then I can just use the remaining part that's not glued down to tuck the envelope flap behind. And then that just creates a really cool effect and it's something a little bit different. I'm going to grab some liquid adhesive here and I'll apply it just to the bottom corner of that little heart. And then I'll just kind of get it lined up and to make sure it's right in the center, I'm gonna grab my Tim Holtz ruler. And this ruler has a zero center so that you can make sure that you have the same amount of space on the left and the right. And then we know it's right in the dead center of the project. So I like that. I'll leave this envelope alone, let that adhesive time to dry before I try sticking the flap inside of it. Let's move over to the card base now. I have a white heavy base weight sheet of cardstock. This is 120 pound cardstock. And I'm going to trim this down to create a five by seven card. And I do this by cutting across the eight and a half inch side. I'll cut that down to seven inches and then I'll rotate and cut that down to 10 inches. And then I'll pop it in my scoreboard and across the 10 inch side, I'll score at five inches. And then I will crease the fold and because this is a heavy weight cardstock, you wanna make sure that you get a good deep score here and really burnish that score mark. So I'm pressing down really nice and firmly and giving that a good score on both sides so that it lays nice and flat. Now in my template book, there are the steps showing you how to create these card bases. All the measurements, page sizes, where to cut and score are laid out there for you. And then also there are card layer measurements so that you can layer up the papers or the backgrounds on your card in quarter inch increments so that you get nice borders all the way around your pattern papers. So I'm going to grab those two little strips. Now I want to put them back together so that they're whole and then you get that sort of riveted metal in the wood and I, I really like that. So I'm going to apply adhesive to the bottom of my card base and then I'll get the first piece lined up. I'll use the grid marks on my cutting mat to really make sure that everything is nice and straight. I really like symmetry and you know I like to make sure that things are straight and even and then I'll grab the second piece and line up those little rivets and press that in. You can't even tell that this was cut apart. This fit together seamlessly. I'll grab my bone folder and press in that adhesive nice and good. I'll grab my scissors and cut away the little excess hanging off. And now we have a decorated inside of our card and those little scraps don't go to waste. I really love that. All right, so now we're gonna take the big piece here. And I was just kinda trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and I didn't really wanna have too much white space. I do like a little bit. I wanna have a cute little white border around, but this piece kind of really didn't fit with sort of the background that I wanted. I grabbed my card layers to try to get an idea of what size I would need. And since this piece already measures three and a half, 
I needed to cut this down to four and a half. And I could do that twice to create one large piece that measures six and a half by four and a half. And I'll show you what I mean here. Once I get them trimmed out, and then I thought I would put them side by side to create one large panel. But I didn't really like that look. It kind of fell off to me. So I thought, well, let me pull in the card base and take a peek at sort of what it looks like. So we got this cute little white border. And then when I put them together, it kind of looks weird. So I wasn't really a fan of that. I decided that I needed to cut this down. I liked having that little white space between the two patterns. And it, to me, it kind of felt like two doors. So I thought that was really cool. So I pulled my trimmer back in. I cut this down one more time to three and a quarter inches. So now we get that six and a half inch measurement. So you have two pieces that measure three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I kind of flip over to the other side to see if I would like that pattern as my front and decided against it and decided to go with wooden doors. And I thought that was really fun. I really love the way this turned out. It's so beautiful. So I adhere those down, leaving a little bit of space, leaving a white frame all the way around and a little gap between those two pieces. And I love the way that this started to come along. I pressed in that adhesive with my bone folder. And then I thought, well, what else could I do with this card? So I grabbed some of the die cuts again and I started digging through looking for some ideas. So I have two types of die cuts. I have one that's a chipboard and I have one that's just a regular ephemera. So I'm working with the regular ephemera and you can kind of see when the light hits, it's got this beautiful foil effect, really gorgeous. And I tried just about everything. I grabbed all of these die cuts and went one thing after another and I found these beautiful gargoyles and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if there were two of the same facing each other? And wouldn't you know, there was. We've got two gargoyles and I thought we could put these right in the corner to sort of guard the doors. And then I've got this great big lock that really pulled everything together. I love the way this looked. And then I found a little sentiment that says adventure. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if the lock was sort of loose, kind of hanging off of that adventure sign? And then I was sold. So I was really happy with this sort of plan. And I pushed everything aside and then got to work at adhering things down. So I'm going to start with the sentiment first. I've got three little foam squares here. These are just little 3D foam squares I picked up from a local craft store. And I'm going to hang the lock onto that foam. So I'm going to peel away the little adhesive back, get my sentiment sort of lined up in the center of those two doors, and then put the loop of the lock over top of the center foam squares. So the lock stays in place, but it can move around. And I thought that was a really fun element. I'm going to grab some foam squares and pop up my gargoyles. And I did cut some of my foam squares down so that I could fit it into the little feet and and wings of the gargoyle so that everything was popped up evenly and I wouldn't have to worry about it getting crushed. So there we go. I love this. I love that little lock swinging around. And I thought maybe it needs just a little bit of a dimension underneath it. I grabbed a couple more foam squares. And this time, instead of peeling the release paper off the back of the foam square, I left it on. So then it would just provide dimension without sticking down to my project. So I just popped three little foam squares on the bottom part of this lock. And then this swings nice and freely. And I love this look. Now, I thought maybe we should put a key on the inside of the card. And there was a nice big gold key with a shiny sort of foil effect. And I decided to use that one instead, a gigantic key on the inside of this card. So everything is cohesive and ties together nicely. We've got a gorgeous card that could be used for anything. You could write anything you want in here. It could be a fun birthday card, or it could be just a letter or, you know, some inspiration and anything that you want to put inside of here. Now I found this little chipboard sentiment. And I was thinking about putting that on the inside of the card. And I almost settled on it. I thought, well, this key looks gorgeous sort of sitting on the ledge here. And I thought that's really neat. So I'm going to adhere the key down right to the bottom part of this card. And then I decided against the sentiment 
and then that is it. The card is complete. The last thing I want to do is add a little chipboard element to the front of my envelope. It says the magic is in you. And then it just really pops off the front of that envelope. Now we can tuck our card inside of our envelope, use the little locket closure to close the envelope flap. We have an absolutely gorgeous card project and matching envelope. There we go. So this fits in nicely. This is probably one of the most favorite cards I've ever made in all my life. I just love how everything ties together nicely. And it was really easy to make. I didn't have to do anything complicated. I just had some fun, cut up some pattern paper and created a gorgeous card. Okay, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. If you're interested in any of the products I used in today's video, you'll find them linked in the description box down below. And as well, you'll find a coupon code for the Hollow Tree Hobbies craft store where you can get 10% off of your purchase and they carry this gorgeous, beautiful Magic Forest collection from Stamperia. I hope that you'll check that out. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.